Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to lecture number 5 of the subject business law Today's topic is discharge of a contract. I am Dr. Rama Bansal, working as assistant professor at Arya College, Ludhiana. This project is sponsored by DTH Swayam Prabha MHRD, New Delhi. What we are going to discuss today that is about the discharge of contract, and in that the modes of discharge of contract. Contract. discharge by agreement by operation of law by breach by performance by impossibility to perform and by lapse of time so let's start first of all we will see what is the meaning of discharge of contract discharge of contract means termination of the contract that means to make the contract at end it is totally to make the contract as null so in formal words if we say discharge of contract means putting an end to the contract or termination of the contract a discharge of contract refers to the contract that is fully performed means when both of the parties involved into a contract have performed or the or they have not performed but the contract due to some legal consequences has come to an end that means the contract is null now the agreement is null at the end when this situation this stage reaches we call it as this is a discharge of contract let's see an example a says to b i promise to sell my bike to you for rupees 50000 and b replied that i promise to pay rupees 50000 so a is a promiser and b is a promisee where a says that i want to sell my bike for rupees 50000 and b is also ready to uh, pay rupees 50000 for the bike so here the contractual relationship has been created between both of the parties means the promiser and the promisee so when this contractual relationship gets cancelled or get terminated we will say this is a discharge of contract so next how the discharge of contract is possible that means what are the modes available for discharge of contract one the discharge of contract by agreement discharge of contract by operation of law discharge of contract by breach discharge of contract by performance by impossibility to perform and by lapse of time means any contract or the obligation of the contract can be discharged by any of the uh, mentioned modes let's start with the first mode that is discharge by agreement so when both of the parties agreed in between that we want to uh, discharge this contract by any method that is novation or alteration the contract is being discharged let's read the lines the right and obligations created by an agreement can be discharged without their performance by means of another agreement between the parties which provides for the extinguishment of the earlier rights and obligations uh, the contract here can be discharged by two ways one is the novation second one is alteration so now what are these term first one is novation when the existing contract is replaced by some another a new contract that is the novation when a new contract is substituted which discharges the obligations of responsibilities of the old contract is known as novation that means novation is a substitution of new contract for the existing one it means when at the place of the existing 
contract a new contract is being formed the provisions of the contract as are, are being novated that means this is the process of novation and novation may occur in two ways one new party is substituted for the old one in which the old parties are being substituted by the new parties let's take example in old contract there were parties a and b now either a or b are replaced with c and d or a is replaced with c means either one or both of the parties are being substituted second parties may substitute new contract for the old one that means the parties would remain same mr a and mr b were the parties of the contract in the existing one and in the new contract even mr a and mr b would remain the parties but now what will change the terms of the contract so let's see the example a owes money to b under a contract it is agreed between a b and c that b shall accept to c as his debtor instead of a so the old debtor of mr a to mr b is at an end and a new debt from mr c to mr b has been contracted here the parties have changed here the existing parties were a and b now the in the in the novation after the novation the parties are mr c and mr b that means there in case of novation either the parties may change or parties may remain same but the terms of the contract may change but this must be with the uh, permission of with the consent of the all the parties involved into a contract so what are the essentials of novation one novation occurs with the consent of all the parties as i have said it uh, right now uh, that novation must be occurred when all the parties of the contracts are ready to do that let's see the example mr a owes mr b rupees 1000 under a contract mr b owes mr c rupees 1000 Mr B orders Mr A to credit Mr C with rupees 1000 in his books but Mr C doesn't assent to the arrangement that means there was no consent of Mr C for the novation Mr B still owes Mr C rupees 1000 and no new contract has been entered into means in this example we can clearly see that if there is no consent of any of the party involved into the contract the novation is not possible second is new contract should be enforceable at law means what, what if if some terms of the contracts are being changed or the parties are being the change so after all that novation the contract must be enforceable at law let's see the example if the contract was between a and b Uh, both were the major they were in the age of above 18 years of age and they were uh, capable of entering into a contract but when the parties are changed when the contract when the novation process is being followed there is a new contract between mr a and c and c is a minor so c is not allowed to enter into a contract he is not a cap he don't have a capacity to enter into a contract under section 10 of indian contract act 1872 that means it would affect the enforceability of the new contract so this is not a valid novation and last is the new contract for old must be made before the expiry of the time of the performance that means whatever novation is being suggested or whatever novation is being done into the contract that must be done before the expiry of the performance once the time of performance has gone no novation is possible that means Uh, in case of valid novation there must be consent of all the parties the new contract formed after novation should be enforceable at law and new contract must be done before the expiry of the performance of old contract second is the alteration alteration means changes in one or more terms of the contract uh, as like in case of novation here the alteration must also be done with the consent of all the parties involved if the consent of all the parties is not involved the contract would become void so 
when the alteration is done in the contract means it must be done with the consent of all the parties and whatever the alteration is being done that alteration uh, should should be regarding the change in the terms of the contract but no change of the parties and the it results into the discharge of the original contract means after alteration the original contract would be discharged and there would be a new contract so let's see the example if mr a enters into a contract with mr b for the supply of 1000 bales of cotton at his warehouse on 1st july 2020 later both mr a and mr b agree to postpone the date of delivery to 1st august 2020 this change amounts to alteration of the contract as we can clearly see in this example that the date of delivery has been postponed by the consent of both the parties that is mr a and mr b it was postponed from 1st july 2020 to 1st august 2020 so this there is a alteration to the contract and alteration is being done with the consent of both the parties involved so it leads to discharge of the original contract third under this is the rescission rescission is what rescission is if the parties of the contract agree to resign it the original contract need not to be performed with the mutual consent and the consideration if both the parties are agreeing that they will resign the old contract so the original contract would would be discharged so it need not to be performed basically it is a cancellation of the contract and con and the cancellation must be done by the mutual consent mutual consent means when both the parties are ready to resign the old contract means original contract and when uh, it is being uh, uh, it it is with the, by the aggrieved party uh, aggrieved party means if there is a breach of the contract by one party one party has not fulfilled the terms required to perform a contract then the other party which would be known as the aggrieved party can ask for the rescission of the contract that it should be discharged third by the party whose consent is not free we all know when the consent in the contract is not free it makes the cons uh, it it makes the contract the voidable so uh, in th in this case same uh, when the consent is not taken freely from the one uh, from one party that means the contract is voidable at the option of that party if they want to resign the contract the original contract would be discharged next remission remission under section 63 of uh, indian contract act 1872 says that if any kind of lesser amount or lesser degree of performance is accepted in the original contract that means it leads to the remission basically it is a unilateral act of promising discharging at his will means when one of the party wants to discharge the contract at his will this is called as remission in england a person cannot remit unless the fresh promise is supported by the consideration but in india a promise he made him it or give up a part of his claim let's see the example mr a owed large sum of money to mr b mr c offered to pay lesser sum in satisfaction of mr b's claim on mr a so mr b accepted it it was held that acceptance was in full satisfaction and mr b cannot claim balance from mr a after receiving payment in full satisfaction next is waiver waiver is the abandonment of the right which a person is entitled to so to constitute a waiver there is no need of any agreement no need of any consideration on waiving uh, the contract on waiving the right of one party when one party waives its rights the other party is released from his or her obligations let's see the example if mr a promises to paint a picture for mr b then mr b later on forbids him to do so means he say there is no need to paint a picture then mr a is no longer bound to perform the 
प्रॉमिस सो दे दैट मीन्स वेवर लीड्स टू डिस्चार्ज ऑफ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट इफ वेवर इज डन बाय वन पार्टी द अदर पार्टी इज ऑटोमेटिकली रिलीज फ्रॉम हिज और हर ऑब्लिगेशन नेक्स्ट इज एकॉर्ड एंड सेटिस्फैक्शन सो एक्सेप्टिंग एंड एनी अदर सेटिस्फैक्शन other than the performance means one part when one party uh, is accepting that anything else which is to his satisfaction other than the performance that is known as accord and satisfaction if we uh, read these two terms separately then the accord means the promise to accept less then what is due under the old contract means what was due under the old contract if something less is being accepted it is called as accord but if we talk about the satisfaction satisfaction is the payment or the fulfillment of the smaller obligation so accord is unenforceable but if it is followed by the satisfaction it discharges the pre existing obligation of both of the parties let's see the example mr a owes mr b rupees 1000 Mr B agrees to accept rupees 750 in full satisfaction that means here there is a, an acceptance of the less performance that was to be done in original the agreement to pay rupees 750 is an accord and the actual payment for rupees 750 is the satisfaction so accord and satisfaction both leads to the discharge of the original contract so this is the first in which we have read that the the original contract can be discharged by all these ways second is discharge by operation of law so operation of law means where the uh, law enters where the terms of the provisions of the law uh, enters into a contract and due to that entrance of the law the original contract uh, is being discharged so how it is possible let's see under this the first one is the insolvency insolvency uh, as we know insolvent person is not uh, insolvent person is not having the capacity to enter into a contract uh, and this is uh, to, th this makes the contract void so the rights and liabilities of the insolvents are transferred to an officer of the court this uh, this person is known as um, as assignee in the presidency town and uh, insolvency officer in case of india so uh, it is uh, basically when some person becomes insolvent so the automatically the contract between the two parties gets discharged second the merger in case of merger when there is a acceptance of a higher security in the place of the lower one it leads to discharge of contract it distinguishes a right by virtue of its coinciding with another and greater right in the same person let's see the example mr a holds certain property under a lease subsequently he buys that property under uh, for which he has a lease now he buys that property his right as a lessee is merged into the right of ownership now the uh, for the land now uh, now acquired that means uh, uh, th that means a higher security is being placed at the place of the lower security so in this case this is automatically discharge of contract third under the operation of law is alteration an alteration is a written contract made with the without the consent of the other party uh, which leads the which, which leads to discharge of the contract if any of the party involved into the contract makes any kind of alteration without the consent of the other party this leads to discharge of contract but it is important here to mention that that alteration should be of a material part of the contract now what is the meaning of material part material alteration means that alteration which can affect in a significant manner the right and liabilities of the parties in other words if any kind of alteration is being done without the consent of other party which can have a greater effect on the right and liability of the other party it leads to discharge of the contract let's see the example if a bill of exchange for rupees 25000 had been altered to rupees 2500 
that means the actual amount of the bill of exchange was rupees 25000 which was altered to rupees 2500 without the consent of the other party so the bill becomes bad in law and the creditor cannot even ask for a decree of rupees 2500 so here the contract is being discharged reason being there was uh, there was no consent of the other party in case of alteration fourth under the operation of law is the death as we all know if any of the party is being is is dead so there is automatically discharge of contract let's read between the lines where the performance of a contract is required to be made in person and the personal qualifications of the promiser are the consideration for the contract that means where the presence of the person is important the death of the promiser discharges to the contract means in 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 all those contracts where the where the uh, where for the performance of the contract a presence of a person and and the personal qualification of the promiser are required as a consideration so so there the contract become uh, there the contract discharge with the death of the promiser so in other contracts the rights and liabilities of a diseased person uh, pass to his legal representatives so this is this was the contract discharged by the operation of law now we move to the third one that is discharged by breach so now what is a breach when any party fails to perform the obligation involved into the contract so we say that there is a breach of contract so this breach uh, leads to the discharge of contract so breach of contract be a breach of contract under uh, under this case may be of two types one is the actual breach and second one is the anticipatory breach let's read in detail about these two types of breach let's start with the first that is the actual breach so what is the actual breach actual breach is uh, is done when the performance was actually due let's see the example mr a agrees to deliver to mr b 20 chairs on 1st may and he fails to do so that day there is a breach of contract by mr a means when the actual performance was due and the and one of the parties of the contract is not able to perform on that particular day so this is called as actual breach and when actual performing the uh, performing the contract means it was during the performance uh, when one party cannot perform that is called as the actual breach so here one party performs his part and other party allegs that it is not a proper performance so here the breach of the condition is the essential to the main purpose of the contract which leads to discharge of contract and if there is a breach of uh, only a collateral term to the contract so here the contract is not get discharged but it will lead to the claim for damages only that means when there is a non performance um, uh, on when there is a non performance when it is it was actually due so that is called as actual breach second is the anticipatory breach of contract so what is the anticipatory when any of the party involved into the contract uh, refused to perform before the due date of performance this is called as anticipatory breach of contract basically it is a premature destruction of the contract rather than a failure to perform it as in case of the actual breach the one party fails to perform on the due date but in case of anticipatory breach uh, the it, it is a, when the promiser refuses that he would not continue with the performance and that is even uh, being conveyed before the due date that is called as anticipatory breach of contract let's see the example mr a contracts with mr b on 1st january to sell 500 quintals of wheat and to deliver it on 1st may on 15th of april mr a that is uh, before the due date that the due date was 1st may but now on the 15th april mr a writes to mr b 
and says that he is not going to deliver the wheat. So, Mr. B may immediately treat the contract at an end and file a suit for damages without waiting till 1st May. Here the, uh, the performance date was 1st May. But in this case, Mr. A on 15th of April before the due date just refuses that he is not going to deliver the wheat. That means he is resigning the contract. He is he's, he's, uh, he's not willing to perform that. So in this case, Mr. B need not to wait till 1st May. That was the performance date. He can uh, file a suit for damages even before that date. So this is called the anticipatory breach of contract. Now, what are the consequences of anticipatory breach? So, consequences of anticipatory breach says that here the whole contract can be treated as broken and the damages can be claimed or the contract can be treated as still operative and the party can wait for the time of the performance. So, let's see the example. Uh, a, a singer, enters into a contract with B that he will sing every night in his club for next six months and B would pay him rupees 500 for every performance. On fifth day, A willfully did not come for performance but continued his performance from sixth day. Now in this case, B has signified his equations in the accountants of the contract and cannot now put an end to the contract but yes, Mr. B can claim damages from Mr. A for fifth day non-performance. That means uh, the whole contract is being not broken. Here the damages can be claimed for the non-performance. So how these damages uh, would be calculated or how these damages would be measured? Uh, there are few uh, cases in this. Let's read all those cases. The reputation of a contract is accepted and the contract is put to an and immediately, right? And the damages will be measured by the difference of the price prevailing on the date of breach and the contract price. So the difference between both these terms, I repeat, the difference of price prevailing on the date of breach and the contract price is charged as a damage. But if the contract is kept operative and subsisting, then the damages will be measured by the difference between the contract price and the price prevailing on the date fixed for performance. Okay. So when the contract and, and the third is when the contract is terminated, the aggrieved party may bring an action for damages for breach, but he will be bound to restore to the other party the benefits he may have received under the contract. So these are the ways, these are the things when we need to, uh, which we need to consider while measuring the damages. Next, fourth is how the contract is discharged. That is, it is discharged by impossibility of performance. Sometimes the contract becomes impossible to perform then it is being it is considered being discharge of contract so there are a few conditions for the impossibility of performance one is the impossibility must be in existence when the contract was made it may or may not be known to the parties at that time when the contract was made but the impossibility must exist at that time and second is, if the performance of the contract is not possible, contract is deemed to be void and no party can claim damages for non-performance. Means if there is a, there is a poss an impossibility of performance of the contract at present, in that case, no party can claim for the damages. The only remedy available is that the contract would be the void contract. So, impossibility of contract may be occurring for two reasons. For it, it may be of two types, initial impossibility and subsequent impossibility. So, let's read about the first, that is the initial impossibility. So, initial impossibility as its name indicates that initial impossibility was the impossibility which was there at the, uh, at the time of the agreement. 
the parties may or may not be knowing the fact that that it is uh, impossible to perform so if such type of impossibility exists in the contract here the agreement is void ab initio void ab initio means it is void from the very initial from the very first step so in this case because it is a void ab initio agreement that means no contract has come into the existence so let's see the example if mr a agrees that he would uh, discover the treasure by magic so this agreement is impossible to perform and this was impossible to perform uh, with uh, with the first stage that means it was void ab initio so in this case no contract has come into the existence second is the subsequent impossibility section 50 says that if following conditions are fulfilled it leads to subsequent impossibility subsequent impossibility means the contract has become impossible to perform later on so the conditions are the act should have become impossible to perform first the reason of non performance event could not be prevented by the promisor means after even even after all the trials by the promisor means after all the willingness of the promisor to perform the contract it is now totally impossible to perform the contract third the impossibility should not be self introduced by the uh, promisor means the impossibility of the contract is not because of the promisor right so uh, we can see the example here a and b decided to get married but before the fixed time of the marriage a becomes mad so the contract becomes void that means when a becomes mad there is uh, there is no reason which is being given by the promisor intentionally so it it is the thing which can't be prevented by the promisor and now it is impossible to ma get married with b so all these reasons have come uh, come under the uh, criteria of subsequent impossibility so it leads to a void contract a contract may become impossible of performance due to following reasons one is the destruction of subject matter if the main subject matter of the contract is uh, is got destructed means the the subject matter of the contracts do not exist at present that means the it is impossible to perform and it leads to discharge of contract and this and the and the main condition to this is the subject matter of the contract is destroyed without the fault of the parties that means there is no fault of the parties in the destruction of the subject matter so there is a leading case in this uh, proving this point that is uh, taylor versus caldwell let's see the facts of the case the facts of the case uh, says that a music hall is to be given for some purpose for some specific dates but before it was given it got fire and the whole music hall got destroyed means the main uh, the subject matter of the uh, of the uh, of the contract has got destroyed before the performance of the contract so in that case it was held that because the the subject matter of the contract is got destructed so it leads to discharge of contract this may also be seen in the example a person contracted to deliver 200 tons of potatoes from a particular field the potatoes were destroyed by the pest though no fault of the party the contract was held to be discharged so as we can see in this example uh, there is a uh, there is a destruction of subject matter means no potatoes exist and there is a destruction of subject matter without any fault of the party this is a main leading condition for the destruction of subject matter it means if the subject matter is being destructed by the promisor or by any fault of the promisor the results would be different so in this case where the potatoes were destroyed by the pest uh, without the fault of the party the contract was held to be discharged so the destruction of the part does not absolve the promisor from performance of the contract second is death or personal incapacity 
where the person uh, involved into into the contract is no more means there is a death of either of the party or there is personal incapacity of the party to perform the contract it leads to discharge of the contract we can see in the example an artist undertook to sing at a theater on a particular day but the artist being too ill could not sing on the day fixed for performance so it was held that artist was was not liable to pay damages so the heading death or personal incapacity leads to that in case of death or in case of personal incapacity to perform the contract no charges can be claimed from the party who could not perform due to these two reasons next is change of law if there is any change of law uh, between the date of performance and date of contract so in that case the both parties will be discharged from the contract let's see the example there was a contract to supply oil seeds but government rendered the sale and purchase of oil seed illegal under the defense of indian rules so both the parties were discharged from the performance of such contract as there was a change of law which was not in the control of both the parties next is non existence or non occurrence of a particular state of thing where a state of things which was the basis of the contract ceases to exist the contract is discharged as it is clearly mentioned here where there is a non occurrence of a particular thing happen there they which will lead to the it will lead to the discharge of contract let's see the example mr a and miss b contract to marry each other before the time fix for marriage a goes mad the contract becomes void that means the the actual condition of the a does not uh, remain the same on the till the date of the performance till the date of the marriage means the a was the condition of a was not the same that means non existence or non occurrence of a particular state of thing is not available till the date of performance as the as uh, a goes mad so it leads to the uh, the the validity of the contract and the contract becomes void and it further leads to discharge of contract next is declaration of war if any kind of war uh, being declared between the two countries uh, and the parties are from those two countries so it will auto automatically uh, uh, it it will automatically lead to discharge of contract but when there is a war for the time being the contract can be suspended till the war overs and once the war is over the contract can be revived and enforced at the end of the war see the example a merchant of london had agreed to deliver sugar at hamburg war broke out between england and germany so it was held that the contract was dissolved by the outbreak of the war so as i already said here can be two remedies available either the contract contract can be suspended during the war and and second it can be revived and enforced once the war is over so next is exceptions to performance of contract first point under this is difficulty of performance the contract is not discharged by the reason that only reason that is it it is difficult to perform it is more expenses to perform or it is more burden some to perform or it is let less profitable to the perform to perform that means all these reason that means difficulty expensiveness burdensomeness or the profitability does not affect the performance of the contract so uh, the party of the contract has to perform that contract let's see the example mr b agreed to supply coal within a certain time due to government restrictions on the transport of coal from collieries there was a failure of delivery in time but since coal was available in the open market from where mr d would have obtained it it was not a case of impossibility of the performance so here mr b can get the coal from other collieries 
so it it was possible to perform yet it was difficult at that time to get the coal and to deliver it in time because of some government restrictions on the transport but still the performance was possible so in this case it is it uh, it is uh, it would not be counted as impossibility of performance second one is the commercial impossibility commercial impossibility means when the contract is impossible to performance due to some commercial reasons the leading case in this is hari lakshman versus secretary of state the facts of the case are there was an agreement between d and p to repair certain machinery d failed to repair the machinery due to strike of workman so it was held that a strike of workman is not a sufficient reason to excuse performance that means if the workers were on strike if the workmen on were on strike there may be uh, some other uh, other way to perform that repair there the the person can hire some other workers to perform that that means if there was a commercial impossibility to perform the contract but the, the performance of contract was yet possible so it would not lead to impossibility next is impossibility due to failure of a third person on whose work the promiser relied that means if the promiser has made a promise on the trust of the third person and there is a fault of third person there is a failure on the part of the third person which has made the act impossible so even then it would not lead to impossibility of the performance let's see the example b agreed to sell goods to p as and when he got the same from mills with whom he had placed orders the mills failed to supply there is no impossibility of performance in this contract reason being the material can be taken from the other mills too there were chances to get the material from the other mills that means if the particular mill from where the order is being placed if it is not performing on the time the party involved into the contract should get that material from somewhere else that means the contract was possible to perform so this reason would not be counted as impossibility of performance next one is self induced impossibility if the promiser has uh, has some kind of situations or conditions which have induced the self impossibility to performance even it would not counted as the impossibility to perform let's see the example uh, for example a promise is not discharged when his failure to perform is caused by his arrest and conviction for a crime that means if any person uh, is not performing reason being he is being arrested or he is being convicted for a crime so this this would be counted as self induced impossibility and even in this case the impossibility of contract would not come to the contract the parties have to perform the contract next is strikes lockouts and civil disturbances the leading case for this is of jacob versus credit leonis in which the facts are x agreed to supply certain goods to y the goods were to be procured from pakistan due to rights and civil disturbances in that country goods could not be brought so it was held that this was no excuse for the non performance of the contract so uh, in other words in short we can say when there are strikes or lockouts or any kind of civil disturbances between the countries or the areas from where the material is to be uh, from where the material is to be acquired so even in those cases there are a few chances to get the material from some other place so that means it would not lead to the impossibility of the contract as we have seen in this example the material is to be procured from pakistan because there were some uh, some civil disturbances the goods cannot be taken from that country so it was not be considered as an excuse to impossibility to to the non performance of the contract now what are the effects of this impossibility if the 
contract is considered as impossible to perform what are its effects first one is contract becomes void section 56 sub section 1 provides that if any contract becomes void because of any of the reasons mentioned uh, mentioned above like there is a commercial impossibility there is a uh, initial impossibility or there is some subsequent impossibility to perform it would affect the validity of the contract means the contract would become void second the benefit to be restored the person who has received any advantage under an agreement is bound to restore it or to make compensation for it to the person from whom he has received the benefit third one is compensation for non performance where a person has promised to do something which he knew or with reasonable diligence he might have known to be impossible or unlawful and which the promiser did not know to be impossible or unlawful such promiser must make compensation to the promisee for the loss incurred that means where a person has promised to do something and he knows that it is impossible to perform or it is unlawful and the other party the promiser don't know anything about the impossibility and unlawfulness of the contract here the promiser must must compensate to the promisee for the losses incurred to him let's see the example a contracts to marry b b is already married to c so being forbidden by law to which he is subject to practice polygamy a must a must make compensation to b for the loss in caused to her by the non performance of his promise next is discharge by lapse of time the contract is also got discharged once the time is lapsed so the limitation act 1940 lays down that a contract should be performed within a specified period specified period means the period mentioned in the contract when the contract was made there was some specified period which was mentioned or the limitation act 1940 itself lays down the implied period for a contract so when the there is a lapse of that time the contract is said to be discharged in case of non performance if no legal action is taken by promising within the period of limitation he is deprived of his remedy at law normally what happen a court gives the right to the person that if other party do not perform in the contract the first party can claim for damages or can take any legal action but if that legal action is not taken in the specified time period or the uh, or the period defined under the limitation act 1940 so this will deprived his remedy at the law So let's take the example if the uh, time period for file a money suit in limitation act 1940 is 3 years then after 3 years any party cannot take any legal action against the other party let's see the example a borrowed rupees 5000 from b and agreed to repay the loan on 31st march 2018 so a failed to repay the loan but b did not take any legal action against a till 31st march 2021 so in this case the period of 3 years was up to 31st march 2021 as the contract was due the performance was due on 31st march 2018 so the limitation act 1940 gives the period of 3 years to take any legal action and in this case mr b did not take any legal action within that 3 years of 3 years period of time so in this case later on b cannot recover the amount of loan from mr a as the limitation period is over so so this chart gives the different period of limitation for the enforcement of some of the important contracts so there are description of suit period of limitation under limitation act 1940 and time from which the period begins 
so first is the suit for the recovery of money if there is any suit for the recovery of money the period allotted by the limitation act is 3 years and this period starts from when the loan is made so as in the previous example we have discussed the loan was made on 31st march 2018 so it was due it it can be enforced only in the period of 3 years next is sued by surety against principal debtor again the period of limitation is 3 years so the time begins when the surety pays the creditor next is suit for declaration if there is any suit regarding the matter of declaration so the limitation act provides the period of 3 years and the right to sue first accrues the time for right to sue is first accrues and next is suit by mortgager to redeem if any property is being uh, mortgaged with some mortgager and uh, the there is a suit suit by the mortgager to redeem then the time period is 30 years and it starts when the right to redeem occurs next is suit to enforce payment of money secured by a mortgage so here the period of limitation given by limitation act 1940 is 12 years and this time starts when the money sued for become due next and last is by a landlord recover possession from a tenant means when any landlord when there is any property on the rent and the landlord wants to recover the possession from a tenant so the period of limitation is 12 years means after 12 years any uh, any property cannot be recovered by the landlord from the tenant and this time period starts from when the tenancy is determined means when the uh, the person has taken the property on the rent and this 12 years continues from them let's take the example if mr a took the property on rent from mr b that means mr a is a tenant and mr b is a landlord so if if this property is being taken on 1st january 2005 so the 12 years covers up to 1st january 2017 that means if the p if the landlord recovers the property in this period of 12 years the tenancy rights are there the 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 case can be sued but if the period of 12 years is over this right has been uh, this right is not available with the landlord to sue in this ground last is the last way of discharge of contract is discharge by performance if someone performs the contract that means the contract the the contract is discharged the performance of the contract lies in doing or causing to be done what the promiser has promised to do that means what the promiser has promised that he will do it if he do it on the particular time on the specified time the contract is discharged by performance on the performance of the obligation undertaken by the parties the contract is automatically discharged means once the obligation involved into the contracts are undertaken by the parties of the contract it means that contract is automatically discharged when a party has not performed his promise but offered to perform the said promise in favor of the promise he will be deemed to have performed the promise that means uh, in this case we can say that if any party has not performed what what uh, that what that party has promised to perform but what he or she is performing now that is that is in the favor of the promisee and this would be deemed to have performed the promise that means it is a valid performance and would lead to discharge of the contract and the contract is terminated means in this case in in case of discharge by performance the contract would be terminated when both the parties completely performed the exact thing 
which they were they have agreed to do that means discharge by performance is in short is get discharged when both of the parties completely do what they have agreed to do so so all these are the modes through which a contract is discharged from the performance discharge the contract is discharged so this is the summary what we have discussed i will summarize uh, in in one or two lines each point uh, we have discussed in this lecture the modes of discharge of contract so under the mode of discharge of contract the first we have discussed discharge of contract by agreement where the parties involved into the contract make some agreement into the contract either by way of novation or by alteration or by uh, some remission or by some rescission or accord and satisfaction so in by all these ways the parties to the agreement with consent of each other if they agrees to the new terms of the contract the old contract automatically get discharged second was discharge of contract by operation of law under the operation of law we have discussed like if any person becomes insolvent there is a death of any person there is a change in the law of the there is the, there is a change in the provisions of the law so because of the intervention of the law into the terms of the contract the old contracts gets terminated means the old contracts get discharged discharge of contract by breach in this we have discussed that a contract when one party fails to perform it is a contract by breach so here the contract by breach happens uh, in in two ways one is the actual breach second one is the anticipatory breach in the actual breach when the when there is a breach uh, before the performance or uh, sorry when uh, when there is a breach uh, during the performance of the contract that is the actual breach but when there is a, a breach before the uh, time of the contract before the performance of the contract that is called as anticipatory breach next is discharge of contract by performance when when once the contract is being performed we will say that there is a on discharge of contract by performance both of the parties of the contract have performed their obligation as and when it was said and in the manner which was desired next is discharge of contract by impossibility if sometimes due to some reasons the contract becomes impossible to perform that may be the initial impossibility or the subsequent impossibility initial uh, impossibility means it was uh, when the contract was made the impossibility reason was present even at that time the parties may or may not know that subsequent subsequent impossibility means the impossibility arises after the contract is being made but before the date of performance and in both these cases if any kind of impossibility comes into uh, comes into before the date of performance means before performing the contract and this impossibility makes the contract discharge and last we have discussed the discharge of contract by lapse of time once the lapse of time is there the specified period the specified time of the contract is lapsed the contract would be said as discharge of the contract so uh, here the lapse of time uh, differs from the uh, from from uh, contract to contract as for example in the case of money uh, money lending the lapse of time under the uh, limitation act 1940 is 3 years so once the 3 years have gone there is a lapse of time so a contract can be discharged by any of the modes explained here so in next lecture we will discuss once the contract is discharged what are the remedies available with the uh, parties of the contract so this is uh, for uh, this is over for this lecture thank you so much